So this headache had been coming on all day. And by afternoon, I just knew that it was going to become a full grown migraine. And the only way I knew to get through was to go straight to bed and to close my eyes and try and get some sleep. So I told my partner and then I went to the bedroom and I closed the blinds to get it completely dark. And I lay down and the room was spinning and I was trying desperately not to throw up. And after about 10 minutes, the door opened and my partner came in. He turned on the overhead lights and he sat by the side of the bed and he said, we need to talk. And my heart just sank because it was that tone. I said, could you please turn off the lights? The light makes me feel sick. And he sat there for a second longer, like he was debating whether to do it. And he finally got off and he turned off the lights and he came back and he said, I need to know what's wrong. You've been acting weird all day. You're withdrawn. And I said, I have a headache. And he said, I don't think you do. I think something is wrong and you're not talking to me about it. And I said, I have a headache and talking makes me feel like throwing up. And he said, will you just sit there and I'll talk? And I said, actually, could we do this later? I really need to sleep. And once I sleep this off, I can come and talk to you. He sat in silence and finally he got up and not saying another word, he shut the door loudly behind him. It sucks to feel sick, but what makes it so much worse is when you feel completely alone because the people in your life see the way you're feeling as an inconvenience to them. They don't believe you feel the way you feel. They think you're just trying to get attention or you're faking it or you're making excuses. And now on top of feeling horrible, you also feel guilty because you know you're making things hard for everyone. You don't have the energy to do what you always do. And so other people have to pick up your slack. And so what do you do? Well, maybe you decide to push yourself. You say, well, I can't afford to be sick, so I won't be sick. And you grab some over-the-counter medicine and you down a huge mug of coffee and you stuff some tissues in your pocket and you get back to work. You feel miserable, but at least you're not letting anyone down. Have any of you ever done that? Now, one of the things I know that a lot of you struggle with is not having the energy to keep up with everything your lives demand of you. Life today has no wiggle room. You've got to be up every morning and out the door on time and hitting those deadlines and keeping your performance high, or there are consequences. You can't afford to mess up or make mistakes or get sick because your life doesn't have room for it. Your life depends on you being able to perform to a high standard every single day and get all the things done by the day's end. There's no breathing room. There's not enough time off to recover. There's just this endless grind. So no wonder our natural radiance starts to dim. No wonder we feel so tired and so weary so much of the time. And no wonder we dream of having a real partner with whom we could share some of the load. Now, the first time you come down with a cold is supposed to be a test for a new relationship. Will he stay far away from you until you recover? Or will he come by with chicken soup and DVDs? Now, I had spent most of my life taking care of myself, and so I never really thought about whether a boyfriend had any responsibilities to me when I was sick. All I asked for was the space to do what I needed to get well. So I thought that was reasonable. So when this boyfriend took my migraine personally, I didn't think of it as a red flag at the time. I just felt annoyed. And when I woke up from my nap feeling a bit more human, I went out into the living room and I acted like nothing had happened. So we just agreed to forget about it. But I should have been paying attention because later in our relationship, this particular guy told me that his parents complained all the time about their health. And it really annoyed him because he thought they were just trying to get attention. He didn't believe their health was as bad as they made it out to be. He thought it was just me, me, me. Because of course, he rarely got sick. And when he did get sick, he went straight to bed and he bounced back within a day. So clearly everyone else who's sick must be drawing it out. Now, when we are with people like that, we feel pressure to minimize how badly we feel. We are totally on our own with it because they clearly don't want to hear about it. We're not getting any empathy from them. And if we even mention how we feel, they're going to think that we're looking for sympathy. And so we pretend we're fine and we buckle down and we keep going because that's what we think we're supposed to do. 
we don't take the time we need to rest and recuperate. We just get mad at our bodies for not bouncing back fast enough. So it should have been a time to stop and to rest and to take really good care of ourselves turns instead into a time to whip our bodies even harder and then feel guilty for underperforming. Now, I am hoping that you don't relate at all to what I'm saying because you would never do anything like that. You always rest when you don't feel well. And you never feel guilty for getting sick because, duh, it's not your fault. So if so, you are my hero. And I wish everyone had people like you as role models. Because if everyone was okay with taking the time off they need to get well, it would give permission to the rest of us. But I also know that my experience isn't unique. As we get older and our health isn't what it used to be and our bodies can't perform like they used to, so many of us end up feeling like ashamed because we can see that it irritates people when we can't do what we used to do. We can't stay up until the wee hours. We can't drink more than one glass of wine. We can't push hard all weekend. We have to make allowances for our fragile body and that inconveniences some people. And when you inconvenience people, some of them end up labeling you as difficult. And that is horrifying. When you have spent your entire life outperforming everyone else, you wanna be the person that is always out the door last every single night, but your willpower cannot change reality. And the reality is that bodies need rest and they need TLC and pushing them harder only makes them crash harder. You know, all of those energy drinks and powders and supplements, they're being sold as an antidote for our energy crisis. We have bodies that are crying out for rest and we're grabbing that quadruple shot venti latte. We are pushing ourselves harder because we know that our lives depend on us being able to keep going and going and going. And we can't snooze for an instant or the work will pile up so high that we will never be able to get out from under it. But listen to Dr. Sandra Dalton-Smith. She's the author of Sacred Rest, and she writes, rest is not for weaklings. Hollowing out space for rest is work. Finding time for rest is the hands and feet of the promises we long to claim. It means saying no. It means having limits with ourselves. It means having limits with others. It takes courage to rest in the midst of an outcome-driven society. So do you hear that? Taking time to rest is brave. And we need more than just sleep. We need many types of rest. According to Dr. Dalton Smith, we need emotional rest. We need mental rest. We need sensory rest, even creative rest. And she doesn't believe we need to ask permission to take it. I didn't need to ask permission for my boyfriend to look after myself when I had that migraine. I didn't need to ask for his forgiveness for not being available to him while I was looking after myself. And I wish I had that understanding back then that I do now. I wish I would have told him, I take care of myself when I don't feel well, because that's what helps me recover and feel better. And I would love some support when I'm not feeling well, but if that makes you feel uncomfortable, then maybe we need to talk about what we need from each other. Now today, I know I'm getting older. And I know that my body isn't working as well. And I know that there are probably more health challenges ahead. So I am not wasting time with anyone who guilt trips me for taking a rest. Now, if you would like more information on how to get a really good rest, look for some links below. I will put them in the description. Take really good care of yourself. Seriously, all right? And I will see you next time.